Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna to take a look at the iFi Zendak V2. To get into it guys, the build quality is very good. This thing is made out of metals and feels very sturdy. It has a nice heft to it, which is always a sign of some good quality. As far as the um, power match button, that is essentially just your uh, low gain and your high gain. I usually leave it set to high gain your true base is essentially a button that uh, is a very accessible way to turn up the base for games, music, or movies. I have not really used this because I primarily play, of course, competitive shooters, and I think that the inclusion of overtones of bass is uh, something that you want to steer away from. The volume knob is very high quality. It feels very nice to use. It is not anything that requires a significant amount of force or pull uh, to go either direction and stays in the spot that you want it to stay in. And I think it just looks, looks pretty cool. As far as the unbalanced, this is your 6.3 millimeter input. Your balanced is your 4.4 millimeter input for your Pentagon inputs. I, um, I would say primarily my headphones utilize the 6.3. I currently am using the DT900 Pro X, which is uh, my daily driver, and my HD560s likewise used the unbalanced input. And <clears throat> I, I think if anybody has the option for balanced inputs, I think it's probably the only, at least as far as amp -DAC combos all in one, it's probably the only one that I've seen that actually came with a balanced input. So it's nice to have the option. Taking a look at the back panel of the iFi Zendag V2, you have another 4.4 Pentagon input, balanced input. You have your fixed and variable volume settings. You have your RCA inputs, both right channel, left channel, and you have your, uh, what I primarily power the iFi Zendag V2 with, the uh, USB inputs, but it does also have a 5 volt adapter input if you choose to power it that way instead of powering it via USB. Instead of regurgitating the output power for the headphones for both the unbalanced and balanced inputs, I think it's easier to direct you guys to the fine print. It's easier to visualize and understand. As far as the warranty period, you do have 12 months. It does note that TrueBase was added to add base to IEMs, but of course you're going to get a benefit from it on with over-the-head, uh, over-the-ear headphones as well. And as far as the 16-core uh, XMOS chip, it does allow you to fully decode MQA. Also, after a firmware update, it is fully compatible with the PlayStation 5. The nice thing about the iFi Zendag V2 is it sounds how the headphones are supposed to sound. So in Apex Legends in particular, I did not have added bass, I did not have added treble, and the audio quality experience was very good and close to my topping experience but for the fact that the amp is very different and does not provide the same level of power. If you are somebody who is tired of having 18 different gaming sound profiles on your gaming geared amp or DAC, um, it is nice that this only has two options, true bass or no true bass. And personally speaking, I would rather have a flat neutral experience with no added bloated bass to provide me the cleanest audio experience so I can hear footsteps and imaging in whatever headphone that I am using. Again, the best thing about the iFi Zendag V2 is that whatever headphone you are using, it is very neutral and sounds how that headphone was intended to sound. Out of the DT900 Pro X, the HD 560s, and my DT1990, um, all headphones sounded very similar to how they sound on my topping ensemble. The only difference being the power output with the topping ensemble providing much more juice for those power hungry headphones. Being that it's an all-in-one amp deck, it does take up less of a footprint on your desk than a amp deck stack. Back in the day of Cal Invite between 99 and 2003, we didn't have any very good options for gaming audio until Creative Sound Blaster came out with their sound cards. Onboard audio at the time was absolutely abysmal, and when Fatality uh, paired up with Sound Blaster, uh, we had some very, very good sound card options that changed the game, and a player without a sound card compared to a player using onboard audio at the time was a night and day difference as far as imaging and localization of sound cues in-game. 
I personally use the Creative Sound Blaster cards paired with Audiophile Sony headphones, and it worked phenomenally for me in Cal Invite. Nowadays, that distinction isn't really there. It's not really a fine line with you have an external amp DAC and you're going to have a huge advantage compared to somebody with onboard audio. That distinction isn't really there because onboard audio now is so, so good. If you have a bad motherboard and you don't have a good audio chip on your motherboard, different story, right? Um, but good motherboards that are coming out in 2021 have comparable um, audio chips compared to a lot of these external amp DACs, and especially, of course, uh, compared to some of these USB head headphones and headsets. Now, c looking at the iFi Zendak V2 at $160, it is going to provide an audio experience that is uh, on par with the best audio chip on the best motherboard out there. It is extremely good, provides a very good audio experience. It gets very, very loud for headphones like the 900 Pro X, the HD 560s, the Tiger 300 Rs, etc. If you need something that, again, requires more power like the DT 1990s, the HD 800s, the Topping Ensemble is phenomenal. And the reason why that is my daily driver is because, of course, I am reviewing a lot of these headphones on the channel now, and I want something that is future proof. Um, where I'm not going to get stuck with something that can't power whatever headphone might come down the pipeline, um, which is why I main the topping. And of course, the uh, amp does get a lot more power. And I feel like comparing the Zendag V2 to the topping ensemble, whether it be the DAC or the amp, the sound might be just a little bit, little bit minutely higher quality with a little bit more, um, less reverb going up in power. Uh, or less distortion, not distortion in the sense of like electronics um, or anything like that, but just a little bit cleaner bumping up the power and bumping up the volume. Uh, but again, the iFi Zendag V2 is absolutely phenomenal. And if you are looking to get a nice upgrade to pair with whatever audiophile headphone you're using that isn't too power hungry, I don't think I would recommend anything else but the iFi Zendag V2 in that $150, $160 range. Unless, again, you would like to have a stack uh, that can provide more power in case you need it when you need it if you ever have a power hungry headphone. So guys, that is it for the iFi Zendag V2. If that helped, please leave a subscription to the channel and I'll see you guys in the next review. Peace.